I'm Mr. James. And I'm Mr. Richie. And we We are are the the educators. educators. And we are back. It is July 30th, 2020. It is a Thursday. Once again, we are remote. And uh, yeah, it is a mess of a week. What a week it's been. It's it's a little crazy. It's a little heavy. We only got, <sighs> we're going for 45 minutes in the show. I mean, we usually go over, but, you know, it's hard to squeeze a week's worth at this point. Like, right, I, I miss the boring days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I could just edit out all my size, but then it's going to be 10 minutes. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just going to keep that man and just, yeah, this has yeah. been a mess. I'm just news-wise, I, I wish I didn't have to read the news. I mean, I... Yeah. constantly getting these alerts either on my wrist or whatever this happened this person said that trump said that mm-hmm. something's happening coronavirus stats this happened this person died <laughs> this horrible thing's happening to the economy so you must have that, some uh, updates with that too yeah that's a perfect segue into some covid stats um so now in the world we've made it past 17 million cases yeah uh, up from 15.3 uh, last week, um, 669,000 deaths worldwide. In the USA, we're up to 4.54 million cases, up from 4.1 last week. So wow. it's not the biggest jump, but it's still pretty significant still, 154,000 deaths. Is in Florida uh, and California like spiking right now, I heard? Still. Something's yeah, happening there. I, yeah, I um, I actually, there's been so much in the news, I actually forgot about a little bit about, you know, where the epicenters are, because right now it just seems like everyone around the world is sort of also saying that there's an uptick. So I've been kind of uh, following that a little bit. I think that you had mentioned earlier, China even announced that, that yeah. there was an uptick over there. And so, um, you know, here in Maine, we're up to 3,888 cases. Um, it's only like uh, 150 or so from last yeah. week. Um, again, we're we're kind of lucky here. We are vacation land, so our license plates say, and um, <laughs> so we are dealing still with you know an influx of of tourists. And when a, a tourist shows up and they are positive with um, COVID, they are counted on their state's numbers. And so um, it is a little bit difficult, especially in a tourist-heavy state. Like our entire state oh, is wow. dependent on tourism, kind of like to compare like Hawaii or Alaska or something like that. Um, and so as a result, the numbers are, are low, super low, um, but they are still, you know, it's still significant. And in our county, you know, it's still pretty significant. Good news is statewide. I mean, we are pretty low on the death count. I hate to say that, but, you know, it's true. 122 deaths. It's not a lot. It's obviously horrible. Yeah. Um, but, you know, right now we're doing okay, which I think is going to make – for a more interesting beginning to school because we're definitely going to be trying the live instruction, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Because there's something else, along with all these numbers going up. Yeah. <laughs> there's also a big number that was released today, I think, that is just about a number going down. So is, yeah. that, is that anything good? Is that some good news that you could tell us? Yeah, now the GDP. <laughs> oh, that's the GDP fell. That's right. Yeah. 32.9, what is that, percent? No. Yeah. yeah. Worst U.S. contraction ever. So I Just guess to add that to our comparing plate. this worse than the uh, the Great Depression and everything. They said it's. See, I've avoided the news all day. I've been busy. I'm doing um, professional development for uh, my job, and today is like our last day. So I've been nose in the laptop, getting work out all day, and I, I kind of got a like a alert, something about the GDP numbers, stuff like that. Um, I haven't been able to look into it, but like, so they're talking about Great Depression level stuff. Uh, yeah. that, is, uh, that is news for me, but that's crazy. So this is uh, interesting times. And then here in Maine, we even have a special case of some new things. So uh, Maine uh, is also famous in the country for uh, being one of the most impacted by climate change. Mm-hmm. And I think that We have some more evidence of that, along with all of our lobsters taken off for Canada, and along with our tick population uh, quadrupling or something. Uh, um, We had a shark. We had a great white shark uh, attack. And was it the first attack, or is it the first? Attack, yeah. Well, actually, I guess 10 years ago, 2010, there was a shark attack, but 
the person just got, you know, probably got a tiny little bite or whatever, and they got away and stuff. Uh, but this one actually caused a fatality. So a woman who was 63 yeah. actually died. A seasonal died, resident. And yeah, she was, seasonal resident. And she yeah. was with her daughter swimming. So kayakers had, had to pull her to shore. And I, they didn't describe what happened, but sure. I'm guessing, you know, loss of blood and such because they actually identified the shark by the tooth they pulled out from her. So sharks, I guess when they bite Incredible. you, of course, they have so many teeth and rows and rows of teeth. So they oh, yeah. lose teeth doing that, but... The, the thing that really got me and I had a response to this and I actually have a video I put up on YouTube and stuff like that through another channel I have uh, is that it was in Harpswell, Maine and Harpswell is the only place where I swim. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's two places in Harpswell I swim. One of them's at, at a camp my uncle owns and I just, you know, every now and then I'm able to go down there when his family's not there or whatever's going on. And I swim out generally to this area, which is a rock that's, from the shore near his dock to this rock and the water can get anywhere between like eight to like 10, 12 feet, depending on the tide. Uh, and it's about 20 meters from shore. And the woman was attacked 20 meters from shore. Oh, and this, this rock is also a place where there's a lot of birds. And if there's a seal around, it's going to be on that rock because it's just a, one of those places that doesn't quite get completely covered by water when it goes up to the top. So yeah, that was, and I did at the beginning of the month, I did that. So probably 25 days ago. That's incredible. So I, I have wow. a, I had a video. I just had someone record me that day, go and do this rock and back. And I said, I'm just going to use that because it, uh, I probably won't be doing that anytime yeah. soon because the whole you state, know. you can't go past your waist now. Yeah. Right. I know there's so, so a new law in Maine, like don't go past your waist. I new stuff every day in 2020. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm, like I, if you told me that we were gonna shut down businesses in America over a disease, I was I, I would call you crazy. Yeah. And if you told me that there was gonna be a law in place where we can't go more than a waist or or waist deep in the main ocean, uh, I don't know. I would have tried to have you committed. I think because that's kind of a crazy thing to think about. But here we are. It's, I mean, but, uh, it, I kind of the thing too is that I think a lot of people are going to the beach thinking that this is okay. I'm going to be, it's fresh air, the water's blowing cold air, you know, from the sea. You've got this uh, place where you're not going to hopefully spread any germs or whatever like that because you're hopefully there's going to be enough air between you and anybody else. And right. you've got the sea, which is this open openness you can look at, which a lot of people find is like a refuge and they can go and they can swim. And now don't go in too far because it probably has sharks. So it's like you're, you're, you're getting killed on shore. You're getting killed offshore. Like it's God. where yeah, can you really just have don't. to hide inside? Yeah. It's, like, it's horrible. I mean, thousands of people probably kayak around there yeah. even just a boater you know just somebody just going out to go do some fishing i'd be throwing my line in around harpsville just going i wonder what's gonna be on the end of this yeah. line yeah, I minute, know. you know it's... like every, so everyone right now in maine is, is if they're on the water is thinking the same thing right now and from old orchard beach to to wells you know, they're <laughs> thinking even, they know. are thinking the climate has to do with it and the fact that there's gonna be more there's more seals here and the sharks are just looking for food yeah. So following where the yep. food chain is and unfortunately and the food chains I on guess, migration. Yeah. And it's just one of those things that unless they can find some way to put sensors in and and through magnetic whatever resonance or whatever they could do, put them in and, and completely make it so it's almost like a shark barrier because sharks wouldn't want to go past a certain area because of maybe some electromagnetic frequency or something. But yep. But that Otherwise, costs money, and yeah, and I, and even if yeah. they, even if that, I mean, I mean, I don't even know if that is made. If that's, if that's such a thing, I mean, I know they, well, they can got, throw nets in and stuff like that, but they use that for whales. It's, but it's like, it's not a hundred percent, you know. So it's like a, it's, it's a placebo in some cases, you know. And it's like, yeah, yeah. if it's not a direct barrier to keep a shark out, do people trust it? You know, like a sonic wave. You know, there's evidence that you can, you know, get repel some sharks that way, but. You know what's the distance you know just you know anything resonance like a boat going by drowning out the noise stuff like that that'd be uh you know yeah, well, that's, that's but i wouldn't, I wouldn't too. yeah <laughs> i wouldn't like, trust 
you you buy something like I, I compare it to like buying uh, a dehumidifier or humidifier that tells you something that you don't really need to know. Like, oh, this is like I have one that has a sen- it, it, It's not a sensor. It's just basically after a certain amount of hours of use tells you that the filter is dirty. And then you look at the filter and it's not dirty and you can push a button and if the dirty filter light turns off. Yeah. It's just oh, yeah, you, I, check the filter. Oh my gosh. Are you, it doesn't have a sensor. No, that's expensive to have an actual sensor. How is a sensor going to sense that? Is it going to have like wires interwoven into the, the filter? No, it's not. That's so <laughs> expensive. It's just a thing that just the second you get in, plug in here for the first time, it just marks out the time and, whatever like 30 days passes. yeah and then you yeah. you have to click it it's the same thing when you buy like my cousin bought a jet ski first time we rode on a jet ski was in this camp in harpswell and the jet ski has uh something on it so av- after a month it has to go in for service automatically it won't start and he was so upset oh, he's like i can't believe that's that. tricky yeah he see what sea do does so I'm- Imagine if you were on the water and like you just happened to shut it off that time and you're just like out on a, I don't know. Like yeah, it was, I don't know if exactly island or something. it was yeah. shut off or it was something that it did that was like, he was yeah. like, I have to get it serviced or else this, you know, I can only go this speed or I might have not shut off. I go, maybe it did it the second you let it sit for a while. They have some way of controlling you getting it serviced and a service for basically someone pushing a button was like $150. It's yeah, their way right. to get money and they are to use their oil, gas mixture, and they're this and they're that. I and pretty much grew up in the automotive industry, so I could definitely agree that that's definitely part of it right there. As a matter of fact, so I worked on a lot of electric cars hmm. and I bought a Nissan and I'd get mailers from Nissan giving me discounts on my oil change, sure. which I thought was pretty funny. Um which it does, there's no oil in an electric car. No. There's no transmission fluid. There's no anything. And then to beat all, a customer brings in a Volkswagen electric vehicle. It literally has a light on the dash that says oil change. The very <laughs> same dashboard that goes in their gas models wow. they yeah. used in the electric car. I forgot to turn that off. I just thought that was pretty interesting. So and, and you can always and, trust. And then it keeps doing that. And the person goes, something's wrong with technology. it. Something is wrong with it. You go, let me just uh, take this this fuse out and guess what? It shut off there. Oh, it's going to be yeah. off for good. I'm just going to cut these wires <laughs> as long as I can tell what wires they are because you know, that is, but I so don't trust the technology to tell you what's what. Sometimes. Yeah. And don't trust if something seems cheap and it seems like you could do all these things. It cannot do all those things. <laughs> Believe me, all the yeah. companies that made these smart watches, mm-hmm. the technology that they, that you think they have for measuring whatever's going on in your body. It's not that good. You know, it's yeah. good, things are getting better, but it's just, you it's, are the experiment at, you know, at this point, because yeah. they're keep, figuring out what works, what sells, what doesn't make sure you keep buying them because yeah. it does things like connect you to your phone and stuff, but realize that a lot of the extraneous processes that, that they promise it does, it doesn't do those. It doesn't do those. Well, you don't even actually ca- need to know. I mean, who cares how in certain sleep patterns, stuff like that, it's not going to tell you you want to know how you sleep well, you need to go and get a sleep study done by a scientist. You know, if you want to know oxygen, your blood is like that, you go get it measured and stuff like that. This is not going to tell you perfectly that. No, diabetics, prick the finger, take the actual blood. It's not going to do that exact same thing, even though it says it can measure that somehow. It's just, I even when I first bought this, better, but... this is like seven, eight years old and it just did this. It's one of my little mini rants on that. I just, right. I get so angry that they uh, keep coming up with different watches but then they keep trying to make these big promises but it's the same exact thing maybe it has a little bit more speed to it or it's just something with a shiny new jacket on it i have yet to to buy one of the watches because of that because i want the one that works you know and i'll, I'll wait 10 years before yeah. you know oh, this is I the third to. this is the third i got this for only a hundred dollars refurbished that was seven eight years ago wow, and this nice. was a uh, hundred dollars refurbished it's the third iteration of this watch, uh, Sony Smartwatch Three, and uh, I just went to I looked to see if I could buy it again. Now it's two hundred fifty dollars. Now, oh, wow! For some reason, because they stopped making watches or whatever, everyone's like, "Well, <laughs> we want this watch again. It worked pretty well." And they always said, "This is the best cheaper watch out of all of them." That's the market for you, I guess. <laughs> so weird. 
So yeah. we've got well, some there was things the mini to rant. talk about. Yeah. Yeah, there was a the mini rant. So let me go off on on one uh, solid rant here. So let me, um, pour, let me pour some uh, fresh kombucha. That oh, there you go. Just made, by the way. <laughs> Excellent. Ooh, it's good stuff. This actually is. You're gonna have to stop by. What's in that? This. This is blueberry. Oh this yeah, I definitely have to stop by for that. Blueberry is uh, my favorite. Lemon zest, and and for some reason. That lemon zest really did the trick this time. So nice, good COVID hobby there. Yeah, so there's not wine. I'm just telling everybody this is kombucha. That's yeah, how I roll. That's how we roll. See, he uh, he got into um, making kombucha, and I got into FPV drones. And yeah. so you know, we've all got our own sort Quar of quarantine thing. things. Is all quarantine hobbies quarantine. going on? Yeah. Oh, and we started weird. a podcast. You know, so there's that too. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe we've been doing this for so long already but nice. all right yeah so I, I do have a rant all right um and my rant is, is really because i feel like especially in social media um we're gonna see a lot of people freaking out really upset and and possibly often like they should be upset about what's going on in their schools mm -hmm. because they don't agree and it's hard and it's very difficult we're all about to go through one incredibly big experiment. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands that we should not blame the schools for the pandemic. And so I say that because um, I, I don't blame our school administration for this situation because it's a, it's a global pandemic mm -hmm. and we happen to be in a country that's in bad shape. And we still have, we have this sort of thing where we have to go to work so everyone else can go to work. It's a very interesting situation in our country. And I'm not blaming our districts for the reaction to the situation because we live in a particularly challenging district in our district. Um, you know, we had a superintendent leave, board chair, low grad rates. We have a restructuring plan in limbo. We have financial woes like everyone. But revolutionary ideas aren't feasible in districts that are on survival mode. Yeah. It's like Maslow's hierarchy, okay? We can't expect our kids who are surviving to get food at home to just show up and exceed at school, okay? We're all going through this. This year is going to be nuts. I almost, I wanted to swear right there, but I didn't want to have to go through the hassle of bleeping that out later. But everyone's building the airplane <laughs> as we're flying it. Yeah. Uh, help us build the airplane. Don't start throwing pieces off the airplane saying that they don't work. We still got to try to fix them in the right area, get this plane off the ground. Yeah. That's my rant. Yeah, it makes sense too, because I mean, there's, you know, we had something today where we had the meeting and said We had the, the meeting. About of kind of how they already released something of what we, we could be looking forward to. And yeah. then they had a chance for people to uh, kind of ask questions and, and whatever. And the questions seem to be very specific. We have a cat in the shot right now. Okay, nice. But the, the questions seem to be get, getting extremely specific to things that, that – we can't answer right now, like yep. specific situations. What if a student comes in and sneezes once? Do I need to contact? I can't imagine the amount of students that are going to be sent home for some of the uh, the most inane things of, of like coughing yeah. more than twice or sneezing or taking the mask off or mentioning that they took an ibuprofen in the morning or something like that or they don't have a mask if they show up to school they don't have a mask even though the school district is probably buying a hundred masks per student i mean they're putting in quite a big order i guess another school department yeah. i heard about is ordered four thousand masks for just one school so wow. <laughs> that's yeah and wow. we live in we're in a big school district and so yeah so a lot of us educators right now we are receiving our start of the year re-entry plans right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we can all kind of collectively agree that this sucks. You know, I don't, I, I'd love to hear from some educators outside of Maine because I'm sure that this is not something that is just happening here, but like a lot of the districts nearby are doing kind of the same thing. Our kids are at school for two days and then someone's watching them for three more. We don't know who, but yeah. someone's watching them and you know, three feet apart. We don't even know how many, I don't even know if I have a classroom this year and it's, uh, it's very interesting. So I think right now that um, we're getting the, a skeleton of what the, the, the next 
at least the beginning of this year yeah. is going to look like. And I think that we've got to kind of keep ourselves in check. Let's not swamp the admins. Um, they definitely don't know anything. They don't know more about what's going on than we do. Yeah. I mean, they have their meetings, they're in charge, they get to do that stuff, but they're all in the same, same position as well. So I think we all got to give each other a little bit of space here. You know, we're, again, we're all in the airplane together. We got to keep it flying. But, uh, but so out of the, the meetings I'm getting, so I've been listening to, uh, you know, where my child goes to school, listening to the one that's in, uh, that is the district I work at, and then also some other neighboring towns. So there's a couple of others nearby that are pretty good sized districts. And um, it's all very, very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Everybody's just kind of going with what like state recommendations or even like federal or whatever comes down because like I said, we can't, nobody has the capacity right now to do some next level thinking because all of these school districts I'm talking about are, are basically fighting just for basic funding yeah. um, and, and paying the teachers a fair wage, let alone now we're, we're taking teachers that have been doing live instruction their entire careers giving them a computer and saying all right go be an online teacher now and a lot of the teachers aren't ready for that me and you were a little bit more prepared for that yeah. um you know i'll do whatever it takes that's that's for sure but i think that um you know parent travis or parent mr Ritchie, you know has yeah. uh has a little bit different expectations than teacher mr Ritchie. yeah but luckily i get to try to experience what it's like for everyone out there but i think that um um we gotta we gotta really work a lot harder everyone from parents to teachers and that's what the meeting today was basically said to me is that um everything's gonna be really difficult um every way that you know how to teach isn't going to be available like no groups no breakaway sessions like hey you you two go read a book you guys go do this um in my room it looks like no group projects and how like i do um building projects all the time that like plexiglass and it's going to be each person yeah. to themselves you know three at a table i have i think i have six tables so i can't even fit a full class which is probably I'm, we won't have large class sizes apparently they say mm -hmm. i don't know how that's you know magically going to happen but like um it's still it's just that's so it's you know, three times as much easy, three times as many materials I'll have to expend for the same thing. Or we're going to be on a cart and we yeah. get to walk around with our little cart from classroom to classroom, which my predecessor had to do. My predecessor worked in, in my school with a cart going around from classroom to classroom to teach STEM, which is resource and material heavy. Yeah. And, <laughs> and she was so stressed out over it she was got burnt out she's and it, it really affected her and i saw that i still said i want that job because i love it you know to the core but like i'm not looking forward to it but that's what i'm going to deal with as, as a music teacher uh i'm thinking all the instruments i have i oh think of God. instruments with porous poor the, the materials are sort of porous and how i might have to shellac them and then maybe color code them or label them with a number somehow, and then how I can wash them afterwards. And mm -hmm. I can't do, the, there's no singing allowed. I mean, we had this discussion before, uh, there's a, I'm part of NAFME, which is the National Association for Music Educators. And they were like, yeah, there's gonna be no singing. There's no instruments that you play in your mouth whatsoever. So that's gonna be uh, interesting. I. Percussion instruments are a big thing in elementary school and even through middle school, even, even high school. It's just going to be, things are going to be like brought down to that and we'll get some melodic instruments in there, but there's a certain things that I didn't ha I never had enough of. So yeah. I did a lot of switching around with different students. So I'm going to have to find a way to uh, kind of boost that up. I think there's probably going to be a lot of teachers ordering things on Amazon. And I think that's going to, we're going to really feel that something's going to happen with some supply chain of just weird things pretty soon. I'm pretty sure a lot of schools are ordering masks and that's a, good point. a just, lot of other chain, yeah. stuff that that's just not going to come in because they all have these huge orders and they said, we don't know when it's going to be fulfilled. And yeah, I think we're just, I think some schools might be like, we never got our masks in there. We didn't get this. So we can't open until like it comes in and that'll probably be like a two week hiatus until then. So. 
one thing I, so me and you were in different meetings, but it was the same sort of curriculum that we mm. saw. I walked away with one thing, you know, kind of the negative Nancy in me or whatever, like hearing this sort of one thing. Um, we were asked as teachers, you know, we need to go and, and, and try to do donors choose and get some extra materials coming in for our classrooms. And I just, once again, I, I just think that it's just so crazy how the, the burden falls upon the actual teacher to source materials, ask for give out and handouts. It's like, we're treating our education system right now the same way we do with our healthcare system. It's like on our healthcare system, it's like, all right, well, maybe you should go do a GoFundMe. Now in education, we're asking people to do donors choose like because of lack of proper funding here we are trying to crowdsource funds when our taxes, which are crowdsource, aren't cutting it, you know? And, and yeah. so it's, uh, uh, it's very interesting, you know, and, and I'm going to be positive and go through it, you know, as good as I can, because there's nothing else to do. I'll, I'll be doing this job, whether it's a pandemic for the rest of my life or not, you know, if I can have a job, <laughs> which, yeah, yeah. you know, that's there something are people that, that are losing their jobs now. And there are thousands some of people, teachers, especially even, even in our, district and such that uh like and close, tech, their close, job has changed close to me music teachers there are music teachers we have working that are just there for the uh band the band and the strings the, the larger groups and you know me being a, Group. a string yeah. teacher we don't even know if that's going to happen again i'm ready to do the online lessons as i've done for many many years prior like almost like actually 15 plus years prior uh, but an that. ensemble online, right? You can't but, really. Yeah, and, that, and that's you can't really do that. So it's going to be like that. But the fact that that's all going to be supposedly moved to the end of the day, so hmm. there's probably going to be a drop off there. There hasn't already been like a huge drop off from those that didn't bring an instrument home during this pandemic and they weren't able to go uh. to school pick it up, or they just decided. I got to focus on surviving. This is more important than uh, playing whatever instrument I play. And yep. that makes sense. And they don't want to come back to it because they're too afraid that there's, you know, just so many other issues going on that it's just music doesn't have a place in that. It's just upsetting because I kind of want to make things relevant. But in times of war, is how, how relevant is entertainment? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. If you're if you're if you're on the battlefield, are you gonna you gonna run around with an instrument? Or are you gonna run around with a like a weapon to defend yourself? And that's honestly, you, people have to think like that. And I mean, I I, I get both sides because I, it is good to have entertainment. Sure. It is good to have something that enriches you, and I'm all for that. And hey, look at that's my life. I have to support that. But I can understand where people have to. Uh, get back to themselves and say, I need to survive. It's more important that I, I'm alive and my family's alive than for my pursuit of my own sort of hobby or whatever, you know, and that's, yep. you're going to have to find those that really love it. And hopefully that's enough for it to be relevant. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm on like a crusade, uh, to, if it will, if it were to, uh, reinstate like science knowledge in the world i feel like mm. if we all had a better grasp of knowledge about science in the world then you know the world would be a better place in general but i think that this is at least for the foreseeable future in my classroom the number one thing i'm going to be working on is like relationships like seeing how these kids are i mean there's going to be there's going to be kids that it's nothing new. They're totally fine. They have a great structure at home. They got a great routine, mm -hmm. but the majority I'm expecting this, I'm expecting this to just be crazy for like the first week to a month of just pandemonium. I think we'll get to the first day together. Like usually in the first couple of days, there's no kids sent to the office. Yeah. Right. Like we all, we all kind of get along. There's always this, this, peaceful tension you know and then we just all kind of get into our rhythms and you know there's there's teachers that get into certain rhythms they're wicked nice for the first couple of days they got patience that goes for miles and then after a couple of days it might get a little shorter but students certainly after a couple of days they get they understand certain boundaries and then they start to push on them yeah. and the boundary especially that we all know as educators is going to happen is those friggin masks 
-hmm. those my kindergartners like i cannot send a kid to the office for not wearing a mask i can't send a first grader to the office for not wearing a mask second grade i mean that's going to be even hard for me to do you know but it's but how do i like protect these kids like i've my job is going to be to have them have their mask on because yeah. otherwise the whole room is now contaminated is you know the smaller class sizes that we're promised right now gonna help yeah. you know that's gonna be a big help you know i can just you and i can both probably picture the same like a group of kids um you know that or like a couple of individuals that specifically that's because of the situation of their life they push the boundary and every single ask that is put upon them and they might give in after a while if you develop a good relationship with with them and and they and you you figure out you know a little bit more about them and it's going to be like that times 10 this year it's going to yeah. be you know because some of these kids are going home to we live in a very rural state we live in a state with you know not a huge education background we've got a lot of people that are going to be telling their kids not to wear a mask or like masks suck oh you know? yeah like, yeah that's the biggest thing you know, too Ugh. you're going to be brain you're brainwashed all these teachers are brainwashed Ugh, and you know and we, <laughs> yeah i mean we have some kids that say some pretty crazy stuff because it's what their parents are telling them like you know, and it's just it's just going to be exacerbated with the with the mask thing, and it's just going to be everything from the really adorable kids that just can't do anything but chomp on things, and that mask is now just like wadded in their mouth, and yeah. it's just like, no. you know, the kids that cough and sneeze just because they have allergies that aren't tended to, you know, they're just they're going to fill those masks right up. Like I can't yeah. even, I'm just the masks alone. Like I am for them. 100%. We're gonna have to have we're gonna have to wear probably uh, the nitrile gloves on. Oh my god! We're gonna god. have the gloves on probably like some surgical gloves or whatever, and be changing them in and out and, and constantly putting. I mean, it's gonna be like scrubbing yeah. up for surgery. Yeah. All day, day long, and, and, and I mean, then you were cleaning yeah. up after everybody. They whatever seat they're on, quickly sh 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 spray it down, yep. spray it down, quick, quick, quick. So me and you were looking at masks. Um, there's a bunch of really awesome ones out there. You got a couple off Kickstarter, like yeah. some UV ones, like yeah. some really good ones. I'm kind of uh, right now aiming at just like some like <laughs> good old like the ones I'm used to, like just contractor N95. Like I'm really concerned because your Kickstarter ones won't be in for a while. So like until yeah. you know that stuff starts flowing, like we're gonna have to wear something that it, you know me and you we're not just going to wear a paper mask that's just there for a fact it's not you know we're going to wear a good one that actually works because we care about the people that and something you serve. can you can move around and if you sweat yeah. it doesn't get bacteria in it you may have maybe as some silver woven into it for like the antibacterial i like uh, that idea that that was pretty cool yeah and the uv but, one man what a revolutionary idea that is because of this specific pandemic and the uv light thing and so yeah i think i just get a giant uv light and stick anything i want under it and it messes up your just, eyes man just, i can't be under uv light for too long but i got one in the room so yeah. i can't wait to just i'll just have it on just, just you know run things through like zoom zoom okay i just touch this right. person zoom zoom okay this here comes my egg shakers back boom boom shake right. them up turn them over it's I, so, just one of those things we have to go through these motions that we have to get used to we have to get used to forming these habits which we'll be talking about very soon in another sort of segment <laughs> right but form habits and these habits are going to be very uncomfortable for a lot of people they're going to underestimate and, how much how long it takes to do them oh my god like the amount of time that we're going to invest we have to do two things now every teacher is asked to do live and over the, you know over the internet instruction and so it's it's every single teacher that i know of right now is just got three times the work this year Oh, yeah. same pay three times as work and um you know we don't even have a, a huge uh public appreciation right now uh, you know like a lot of people are you know upset that um you know at us because they got to find child care for three days a week well it's it's trust me it's not our fault like i think they were upset we, from us but when we first didn't go when we first right told they're still to stay upset. home we're still they're home. salty we're, from that yeah we're still exactly. upset from the middle of march guys you should have shouldn't have left us it wasn't us it wasn't us i didn't know i was busy <laughs> moving moving that weekend and i was told don't come back and that yeah. was an absolute surprise to me but yeah yep. well but um 
that's uh that's something that we can talk about uh in perpetuum at this point so oh, yeah. craziness well before we get into our next big segment i think we're going to take a break for our sponsor because i like putting that ad in there i think it looks sounds nice <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. we'll be right back I'm Mr. James. And I'm Mr. Richie. And, and we, we are, are The Educators. educators. We use Anchor.fm to host our podcast. It's the most important tool to get our message out, and it's free. Anchor.fm gives you a full dashboard of options, and most importantly, they do the hard work for you by dispersing your podcast out to different hosts, like Spotify, Apple, and many more. So if you're planning on making your own podcast, making some money from your podcast, we wouldn't recommend you start anywhere else. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And get your voice heard today. And we're back. All right. And we've downsized with our kombucha. Mm. It is kombucha. Just mentioning everybody. Everyone thinks drinking wine. No, not another job. I don't actually drink wine anyways. I don't like it. Mm. I drink wine for them. Just the tea with a blueberry twist. So we want to try to do this quickly. This is part three of health and wellness. Part one, go back, watch it, listen to it. Hopefully watch it because it seems like that's going to be the best way. People uh, like this format seem to be a lot more than our podcast, which our podcast has many more episodes, but yeah, we probably were a little bit more green in the beginning because we didn't know what we were doing so kind of know what we we're doing a little bit now but right yeah we're getting the momentum to go but part one preventative health care motivation part two we talked about supplements and food part three kind of want to wrap things up a little bit as neat as you possibly can and as quickly as you can because each one of these subjects is crazy i'd love to go in a future podcast vlog show whatever you want to call this now uh to go and talk about just preventive health care health care in the u.s how about alternative mm -hmm. health care how about so many different things to that how about talking that's gotta about be one that whole we foods, talk about for sure specific diets bring certain people on to talk about the diets they're on you know i'll talk about my diet let's talk about you know anything i'm gonna talk today a little bit about exercise but we could go on and on about exercise and i have basement that i can show you some of the things i use and kind of show things from that or maybe i can throw some video footage in there at you know at a certain point in one of our videos so you know neil yeah. i actually think that uh mr james i gotta remember <laughs> oh no it's um, okay if they listen further back they'll go hey wait a minute you guys changed the intro like yeah i know i know and it's still getting me um <laughs> so i think you'd be proud of me i actually dug out of our storage room Mm. and I dug out a stepper machine that we have had tucked away that wasn't being used. And I um, have this, we, we bought the house. It came with a, like a, uh, like a really inexpensive, just mechanical gym. You know, it's got a mm. couple of presses, you know, it's got the pulleys and the levers and all that stuff. And uh, I actually used it a couple of times. So nice. I'm, I'm working on this part. So I think that you had mentioned that part of what you're talking about today is, is, building uh, a habit yeah that's the step i'm on right now i just gotta i gotta build that a habit it was a couple of days ago i did all this i was really energetic about it i got it all out busted out a, a pretty good exercise the next day i didn't even think about it i went to bed and I put my head in the pillow and i'm like oh crap i didn't even think about going down and do any exercises but i'm on the way i'm on the way so if you're listening to this and you're in the same situation um listen along with me for some for some good tips here and how to form a habit and actually make this work instead of just being a once in a while thing here. yeah you'll have to put your bicep up and like <laughs> each each time and like it's growing look at it growing and i'm like, yeah. ready for that. like oh it's not growing anymore because my legs are growing because my my body's in homeostasis so it can't grow one place too far which is actually there's truth to that but that's yeah, for another yeah. show yeah. so Healthcare part three, or health and wellness part three, however we want to talk about this. And I, when I say healthcare too, I also mean being healthy and just basically taking care of yourself. And that's your own healthcare. I mean, you are your own doctor. 
right? You can't rely on one other person or, or a team of people to just take, please take care of me because they got to take care of themselves too. And those that are more knowledgeable about how the human body works are going to take care of themselves. I mean, in the end, you have to self-preservation, right? So be your own doctor. You're your own doctor anyways. Take care of yourself. Control your own health care. But be motivated. Eat well. We already talked about both those things. Don't take snake oil. Snake oil being the charlatan, fake, pseudoscientific, whatever substance that people say, take this for more muscle, for whatever function you want to happen better in your body that, that it's not happening enough or for more hair or clear skin or see in the dark, whatever, whatever people tote, it's literally not your body. Even if something had vitamin or mineral that had that potential to do that, your body's going to take it in and go, whoa, way too much of this. I'm going to pump this thing in and I'm going to neutralize that. Oh, a lot of B vitamins water soluble, you're going to pee that stuff out. We don't need that many. We've already got a hundred percent, but what we need are our daily value. We don't need that. And people think if you just keep pumping in, your body's going to forget and you go, oh no, I've made myself super strong by getting more. Like no. the word superfood. Yeah. The word superfood bothered me because I believed it for a little while. If I just eat this very specific type of food, Acai I'll feel berries. better. Yeah, I need yeah those, I'll feel yeah. better. It'll make Goji me berries. healthier. Yeah. Oh, it's been, it's different. You know, it depends on the year, of course. And, you know, and then when, one year I saw that blueberries were a superfood, I'm like, oh, great. I love blueberries. Now the, and even I know now there's no such thing as a superfood. It's all in a balance. It's all about it's what foods you're that are nu about. nutrient dense. You want yeah. nutrient dense foods. Yep. And those are the plant foods that, that you can get. The blueberries, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes. Nutrient dense. They're dense. There's a lot of nutrients in them. There's a lot of calories in them. That's what you want. You don't want something that has, that has basically been reconstructed and is put into a box in the middle of a supermarket and says, you know, it's got these fruit flavors or whatever in it, and yet it's filled with gums and stabilizers to make it into this brick that's easy for you to pick up and eat, yet it basically has nothing, everything's been taken away from it. It's the same thing as eating styrofoam that someone color-coded, basically. It's not doing anything for you. So, and your body's gonna react like that, like you just gave me nothing. So I'm gonna give you nothing. Oh yeah, and by the way, your kidneys shut down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for doing that to me. It's just not a Bonus. good thing. So. One of the big things uh, along when people talk about healthcare and other stuff, they talk about preventive healthcare, they talk about being motivated to exercise. And what I, I like to call it the habit of motion. And that's great if you want to think of it that way because motion just means you're moving somehow. It could be how I'm talking right now. I'm using my hands a lot. This is great that we finally have video feed because when I did this, the podcast, I was like, he's not understanding that I'm passionate about this maybe i just I have to talk fast or i go back and forth between my microphones Ooh, like that but yeah habit of motion doing repetitive resistant exercises cardiovascular motion when i say the word cardio i'm meaning something that makes your heart beat aerobic as opposed to anaerobic aerobic meaning something where you use oxygen anaerobic without oxygen. So you can think of a lot of things where you're lifting weights or pushing weight or pulling is anaerobic and aerobic is where your heart's beating and you can notice yourself probably sweating because you're using a lot more oxygen. It's kind of like an engine to a car. So you can be idle and the engine's on, right? But it's not like it's guzzling through gas and the pistons are going like crazy to move things. Cardio is when those pistons are moving. And it's kind of pushing things through your body and you're metabolizing faster. You're doing everything to just get your energy to work right. And your body, it's kind of a way of flushing things out. And it's about getting nutrients throughout your body and a lot of other things that we, can, we don't have time to talk about here, but it's just absolutely necessary. Our bodies need to move. When you stop moving, horrible things happen to your body. That's and a mic. My yeah. grandfather would tell you that. My grandfather, he's 93, going on 94. And one of his pieces of advice, he, you know, how did you keep working after retirement? You know, like, because he's been, he had his own um, company up until like uh, two years ago. 
And I was like, how did you do it? I just kept moving. I kept waking up every day, kept going to work. I just kept moving. And, and any time that I got injured or I got sick and I had to stay in bed for a week, you know, because of course, when you live that long, a couple times you have to stay in bed for a week. And he was miserable. And, and so he knew he had to, to get back out there. So absolutely. The, the habit of motion. I, I believe in that for sure. It's like that internal motivation too. We have got this internal mm-hmm. motivation that I need to create a habit of motion. And think about it that way. You have to create a habit of motion. You have to be, you have to condition yourself and condition. A lot of things people think are size. They think chisel body. They want this Greek where it came from, these Greek statues, which we have from antiquity of like chiseled muscles and it needs to look like this and such. And people want to get that out of homeostasis body. They want to get to that thing. And they think of that when they should be thinking of, I need to create a habit of motion. I can scale it up if I want to really push myself and your body will be accustomed to more and more and more. Now, if you scale, do things with your diet drastically and do things with maybe substances or whatever like that, there's potential to have a body that, you know, is weirdly proportioned, which any physique model basically has. But it's something that they can't last. It's not going to last like that. What does last for a lot of these people that get out of bodybuilding or modeling and stuff like that is that they keep this habit of motion up everything else that got them to that original body they don't they don't do anymore they can't either afford it they can't take it their body will doesn't respond to it which happens all the time but they continue their habits of motion like there's one of the most famous bodybuilders i used to read up named dave draper from the 60s he was the one that arnold used to see him arnold schwarzenegger used to see him and go i want to be like him someday and he still i think i believe he's still alive but he'd be you know i read books of his for me when he was in the 60s and 70s about exercising and going to the gym every single morning, only exercising for an hour, in and out. He built a special thing to help him squat still with weights on his back because his back hurt and he had a special thing he could hold in front instead of like you normally hold a bar over your back. He held it in front. But it's just this thing. He kept his habit going and he couldn't stop that habit and it helped keep keep him youthful. Now, did he take all the substances and, and shovel down food, you know, 10, 12,000 calories a day. No, he didn't do that. He doesn't need to do that anymore. But he kept this conditioning of himself and this habit so that he, he stays alive. And he still goes to these events where people get to see him and such. And it's one of those things you're like, yes, I knew it. I knew somebody could stay, stay alive and have gone through what you went through. Be as big as he was and basically have pushed himself so, so much and yet still alive compared to others that we've lost along the way. Oh, that's good. Sure. That's good to know. Yeah. That's cool stuff. But so I, when I think of exercising, I want to motivation, everyone's getting a motivational thing. So one of the big things I want to mention with this is don't just do it for yourself. Do get what's called functional. If you want to go for strength, get what's called functional strength. The difference between Say if someone lifts weights and they consider themselves a power lifter versus a bodybuilder, a power lifter wants to lift as much weight as possible. They will do whatever they can to lift more weight. They are there for strength. A bodybuilder says, I just want the big muscle. I don't care if I have to be there with a two pound weight balancing on my, my fingers and lifting it up for one minute and dropping it. If I know that's going to make my bicep an inch larger after like of two months time, I'm going to do it. They'll do whatever it takes to get the muscles. But when it comes time for actually using those muscles, because you, you look at somebody, you go, that person must be so strong. And then they're not because of how they were able to get the muscles. Some, you know, most of the time, a lot of times inflammation and whatever else, there's so many things we could go under this, but I don't want to really get into that yet. Uh, but yeah. You want functional muscle. You want the type that can save your family the next time, say you go rock climbing. And I always compare that to, uh, there's a movie many years ago called Cliffhanger with Sylvester Stallone. And in an opening scene, Love that movie. he's going across this giant wire and he's climbing with this woman and her husband's flying in a helicopter that's going to pick them up because they're doing this thing. It's like death defying, like so far above like the, these like, 
these rocks that just jut up thousands of feet in the air and they get this wire that goes across. And then she, something unclips and she loses thing and he grabs onto her. And of course he's got these huge muscles and he's grabbing on, he's holding her. And I'm like, yeah, functional muscle. He can do that. He can, cause he worked out both different ways to get that. Unfortunately, she decides to uh, let go from him and cause okay, she's what afraid. Yeah. Yeah. She, she let go or something happened. I just, I thought she, he dropped she her. She let go. She let oh, go. Okay, he wasn't okay. going to drop her. He's like, I've got this muscle. I've got this functional strength. And <laughs> yeah. she goes, I'm holding you back. If I keep holding on to you, you're going to fall. And, and he's like, no, look at these, look at these muscles. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> she lets go. And of course that angers the person, in the helicopter because it's his wife and it's yeah it's just a horrible oh, beginning to a movie now it's, i gotta go watch that yeah that's a hor- it was it. so we were it's just so before scary. we started this podcast me and him were talking about how at least i was talking about how i watched a lot of crappy movies too young and i'm gonna yeah. say i don't even know what year cliffhanger came out i watched it the year it came out on vhs i'll guarantee it that but it was too young. That opening scene right yeah. there. I only watched it once in my life. And I still, I recall that. I'm just like, I'm pretty sure this scene ends up bad. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, just, and it's just one of those things. But I think of this like you're, you're with your family and you're, you're someplace where the, the entire weight yeah. of a family member is in your hands and you have to pull them up, pull them away. Do you want to have a body that can do that? Because right. this crazy brute strength that people think they're going to get from endorphins that hit in because they're in fight or flight mode, it's not going to happen the way you want it to. And it doesn't work if your body breaks down and just breaks, you know, like you you tear a muscle. A body that can do that. And the way you get that way is this conditioning from having a habit of motion, habit of motion every single day, doing something, doing something that starts small and then you ramp it up and then you can make into something that was like an hour long per day. So one of the big things is find the time. And I say make it the time when you do some repetitive motion. So find a certain time that works for you where you're not needed by somebody, where mm-hmm. you have time to actually kind of meditate in your motion and do it and try to do it every single day. Do it so you can, you can get to a point where you know you can push it harder and you know you can relax in it, but you can still do it. You know, try to combine it with other things, like maybe get on an exercise bike and such, and you're reading at the same time. And you're all you're focusing on, like, wow, I I like this book. Oh, oh, I happen to have been on an exercise bike for 45 minutes. I didn't know that. Great. The brain is a good thing we have to trick sometimes because it always tells us this is boring. Do something else. You know, we need this other stimulus. Yet your your body's saying, No, I need this. And yes, it's gonna take a while because you're not you know, running full, full speed ahead, you know, sprinting and, and doing something that's going to tire me out soon. I need this conditioning. And you'll notice you'll have more strength to do that and more stamina to do more of it. So if I had to break down something for just, just anyone's body in general, if you wanted, and this is like resistance training, as far as different things, cardio, working your heart, should be something someone does every single day, but it can vary how much, how far you push yourself. The anaerobic or the resistant training is something you can do for a few days on and a day off and such. And this just basically to target certain areas of your body, not surprisingly areas that people want to see enlarged because when we think of a certain body, we think of certain body parts like pectoral muscles, bicep, tricep, a big back, or trapezius muscles, these right here and stuff like that. Everyone wants these popping out and such. And it's just one of those things where people, and they have nicknames for everything, like working my chest today and working my, my back and traps and yeah, but whatever. But so if you want to break these down, you'll have days when you do push exercises and that's to work your chest triceps you can do things with your legs like if you push with your legs like you're pressing with your legs like when you squat down and a squat just means the same thing as like you're squatting to go to the bathroom but you've got weight on your back so you get down and you, you lift it back up and it's that whole motion that works out this part of your body you know 
waist down. <laughs> I'll show you. Stand up for that. Yeah. But you want to have motion. You want to have exercises that work out more muscles than single muscles, right? Bicep. This is sort of, this is a very tiny muscle. It's really not, everyone thinks of big biceps being something, but if you do something that works out most of your body, compound motions, rather than the sort of localized things, then it's going to be so much better in the long run than to have tiny spots of your body that are, eight, you know, that are a little bit larger and yet functionally your whole body is not together. It's just like, oh, I'm really strong with this one thing. Oh, I have no strength when it comes to a different angle. It's like, you're yeah. like, I know to lift. Sure, I can lift the couch up. And they go, okay, can you move around this corner? Ugh, and they drop and they go, I can't move that corner because I didn't work these muscles out on the side. I only know how to lift in this one very strict procedural way. I can't turn it. And that's not functional. I mean, that's you want something that's functional. Like, get some use out of your body, right? Right. So Absolutely. opposite of push, we have pull days, which would be your back, biceps. When you pull something, it works your back, but it also works your bicep. You can do the same thing with your legs. When you curl with your legs, if you were laying down on something and you lift your legs up, I guess, and you pull, they call those leg curls, and that's sort of a pull motion too. And then alternate back between that. If I have my shoulders, I can push up, right? I can pull down. Everything is a push or a pull motion. And you will do that throughout the week. And then you might alternate with a day just only for your legs or just for cardio. And then take a day off and repeat. Now, resistance-wise, you can do that. You can do that with weights, bands, just against a wall. You can do push-ups against a wall. You can do sit-ups. You can do pull-ups. It can start with just calisthenics, which is just using your body weight, and it can stay with just that. The majority of things I do are just body weight. I, I, my, my days at the gyms, I haven't been to a gym in two years, maybe. Uh, yeah, I used to, you know, I, I loved it. I loved lifting heavy weights. I loved being able to have plates there I can put on and seeing how much I was lifting. Uh, but it's money. It's a lot of time. It wasn't the time that I could really, it was always an inconvenient time when I could go. And then there was always waiting for people and stuff. And now with the virus around, it's like, I mean, honestly, right? who wants and to risk that when you can buy $30, you can buy resistant bands and tie them onto anything and get the same workout, just do it slower, you know, buy extra bands, make the same amount of weight if you want, just make sure whatever you're hooking against doesn't come <laughs> flying in your face because you have... 300 pounds of resistance on it. Oh my God. I bet that happens every day. I was, was going to say, and adding for me, especially, um, I have a really busy schedule and commute times are the death of me. And adding a commute to working out was mm -hmm. just absolutely so anti motivational back when I was, I, I a few times I've tried a gym and uh, it, the, the commute part of it, and it was only like a five, 10 minute commute at most or something like that. But still, just like in the winter time, nobody wants to go out and get in that car when it's freezing yeah. cold outside, you know, shovel off the snow to go work out for 10 minutes when, or, you know, hour or whatever. But like when you can do it in your basement, probably a good idea. I would say just, just re the resistance bands, any type of band, any type of thing where you can get some resistance and you can use your body weight. And if you, and for the smaller muscles, that you might want to work out using those bands and also using them for different ranges of motion, stuff like that. And of course I can tie in the video at a later time. We can do really get into the nitty gritty of stuff like this. By the way, I'm not an expert. My father was uh, Mr. Maine in the seventies for a few years. He was an amateur bodybuilder his entire life. He's still alive. He's still, you know, in great shape. He was a personal trainer for, for many years. He knows he worked with he worked out with some of the people that went on to be IFBB and, and professional bodybuilders and such. So I got a lot of stuff from him. When I grew up, I read his bodybuilding books. I read a lot about and, and the people that he liked, I liked their bodies as you know, finding out how they did their workouts and stuff like that. And I looked this stuff up and I got in and out of bodybuilding for years. You know, I used to eat a lot more food than I do now. And, you know just in and out. When I had time, I could do that when I didn't have time. So 
I'm used to creating that habit and going back to that habit, but it's from researching it and getting into it a lot that you, you know, I was part of communities that are online. It was pretty crazy. Uh, say even like 15, 16 years ago, how, how involved I was in it. I mean, I think in most I was weighing, I weighed about 190. I think I'm 160, a little over 160 right now. But uh, yeah, much different, much different size, different mindset. Thing is, you want something sustainable. And I got to a point where I wasn't, it wasn't sustainable to be like that. I couldn't eat enough food. And what I ate, I couldn't, my body just physically couldn't process that. And my diet wasn't the one that was really optimal for me. So like that, but all I could think of was I need to work out more and I just can't, I need to eat more food. And I did find a way to do that. So I, even I did the shake route at some point, like you mentioned, you did and stuff to try to gain weight and stuff. But I used to drink 2000 calorie shakes yeah. for breakfast before I went and worked out in the morning at six in the morning. It was, Absol- it was torture, and I think that's probably why I was so averse to it. I mean, the, everything from waking up that early to the taste of that type of a shake to the effects of it afterwards to going to the gym, you know, in February and having to wait, you know, with, for these sweaty machines and things like that. So, no, I think I'm going to be doing a lot better. I got, uh, I'll be setting up my my stuff make it a little bit more accessible, but it's, it's so far so good. I'll, uh, but I got to work on that habit myself. So. And I think that's the thing is just finding something you can do, whatever that means for you motion wise and just doing it. And so that you get motivated to do it and make a habit of it and try to mix something else in there. Be Pilates, yoga, whatever you want to call it. The thing is Google is a great place to just search up different things, find out, find a forum, find, Find some some sites where people are like saying, "Yeah, I can try this." Do maybe change it up and then make yourself a little schedule. When something gets boring, switch it out with something else. And go in with a heap of skepticism, though, and make sure that you're. Yeah, I mean, it, as not long as believe you, in everything, right? If you're in motion, if you're if you're in motion and stuff right. like that, and you can get into that, then if you've taken that time and you go, "I already, I can do this within that amount of time." You might go, wait a minute, I can take this time now and this is more efficient. So you always get more efficient. You always get better at doing what you do. And then just keep getting better and better at it. And eventually you're going to probably have some sort of program that you can use. And I mean, the second you start getting some results, you'll probably want to share that. You'll see others that have some sort of results and you'll want to know what they're doing. And they're going to be pretty open about telling you exactly what they're doing. Probably not to the point where they're telling you what substances they're taking if they're if they're like get the super large, you know, atrophied muscle. But uh, that's one of those things where those little secrets people like to keep, right? But no, this is just hard work. Eh, Getting down to like below 10% body fat is, there's hard work and there's, you need some assistance because your body, it's just not natural for your body to be like that. Your body is not, it doesn't want to be that low because without, certain amount of body fat, organs, organs, you know, are at danger of, of being hurt. And your body's like, I'm not going to get myself to that level. And maybe you don't have the genetics to get to that level because your body wants to make sure or take care of itself. So in any, any case, in doing any of this, if you're out of breath, this and that, you're going to get used to it, but it's also your body ways of saying, Hey, calm down, or I can't do that right now. And everyone has to, everyone faces that, but it's good to, to buy yourself to push it that into that direction so you can test what you can do rather than find out the hard way when you're, say, running away from zombies eventually and you don't have enough cardio to get away from them. Not that that's going to happen, but I mean, we do have Not some, ideal. We do have some non-mask wearing people that could be considered zombie zombies. Zombies. I mean, yeah. they, are spreading, <laughs> they are spreading an infection possibly. So yeah, so you got to be prepared for when you have to deal with one of them because you never know. You never know. <sighs> well, I think we've exhausted our time. We've probably gone over. We've gone over by a little bit, but uh, that's all right. All right, it's, it's what we do, and yeah, yeah. hopefully, if you, everyone, please write make comments to us. You know, if you like, what Mr. Richard talked about about schools happening right now and how we're going to open and in our discussions or health and wellness. It's definitely we want to hear from you. Please, we know you're watching. 
and, and hopefully some people are just listening and maybe they can end up watching because it's maybe more interesting to watch us talk and right. seeing us in our places with the my new place i'm keyboard. i'm in a different room today so you know you know, it, hopefully this will change even more as we uh, we keep going on. But yeah, uh, and when we get our it. amazing ring lights, it's going to be yeah. even much better. You're going to get our faces all really nice. Right now, my little lamp that I've got is giving me a soft light, but you see some shade over here. That's not yeah. good. That's not good in uh, YouTube land. I've got basically a uh, a chicken warmer with a regular bulb in it with a piece of paper over it, basic giving me this gentle glow that I, I i'm sweating basically at this point but you know what maybe we could just uh you know we could just put our ring lights and our 4k video cameras on our uh gofundmes you know or our uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they want to fund me what are we funding what are you funding yeah like because that's pretty much what we need to be a teacher right now is like you know some visual audio equipment here and and uh you know some tech support so and and, and the computers <laughs> that can basically take care of that stuff because i'm hearing yeah. all that you buy these Our nice, donors choose these really nice cameras that can get all this these amazing large files of like data and then you don't have a computer that can basically you know just they can process it i, I yeah. in editing this show every single week just adding the things i have bad and i my computer crashes it crashes oh, while it's doing it and yet it still does it but it takes like an extra 20 minutes for it to realize when I say render to a video, it, it it says not responding, and I get the little blue ring that Windows likes to do. It does it eventually, but it's like, I'm like, what's going on? For 20 minutes, everything's frozen, and then it kind of comes to, and I'm just wondering what I can stop on my computer to make sure it doesn't do that, because I'm like, I don't want to lose anything, but... When, you're, when your computer develops a personality, that's when you got to reevaluate uh, the whole situation. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I, need, I need some more RAM. I need everything like that, but... Please comment, everybody. We'll uh, we'll be back with another episode, and I hopefully a better week. Please, please, yeah, another week. Some good news, please. Well. <sighs> All right. Signing off. I'm Mr. James, and I'm Mr. Richie, and we, we are, are the, the educators. educators. Have a good night. <laughs>